England, June 4th, 1944. The men of the armies marched toward the southern ports. Equipment rolled down the roads. Men and machines took their places in the waiting ships. The men were British, American, Canadian, some of them veterans of Africa, Sicily and Italy, some new to battle. They lay in the harbors of the south coast a day longer than planned. The invasion had been scheduled for June 5th, but bad weather in the channel had caused a postponement. From the air, the German coastal defenses were hit by every type of Allied aircraft. As a climax to the terrible punishment of the German power dealt by our air forces in the months leading up to D-Day, pillboxes, minefields, coastal guns, bridges, ammunition dumps, radar stations, tank depots, road convoys, railroad trains going to and coming from Normandy were pounded without pause. The weather was still bad on the 6th, the sea promising to be choppy and dangerous. But the order was given and the ships put out of the ports toward France. On board the men were quiet, tense, grimly elated. The long years of training and waiting were behind them. Just over the horizon was the beginning of the final battle against the Germans. They could look around them and see the overwhelming strength that had poured from the Allied docks, factories, and arsenals. General Eisenhower's order of the day was distributed to every man on board the invading armada. Soldiers, sailors and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940 and 41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. A screen of naval vessels from battleships to PT boats guarded the convoy across the channel. Back in Britain, paratroopers marched out to their planes and embarked for the trip to Normandy.
The planes took off while the invading convoys were still far from the French coast. As the ships moved toward the opposite shore, the men on them could see a procession of aircraft preceding them in the early light. Offshore, the combined fleet swung into battle stations and marched up and down the coast, softening the surviving German installations with a murderous barrage. Our losses were not as heavy as expected. While this was going on, other airborne troops in gliders and tow planes prepared to take off from Britain. One by one, the tow planes lifted the heavily laden gliders into the sky. Now the shock troops of the invasion swung down the nets to the landing craft. Bombers continued their assault on the beach. In a duel with a shore battery, at point-blank range of a mile, U.S. destroyer Corey was sunk. A moment later, the battery that had hit it was itself put out of action by a salvo from the destroyer Fitch. Overhead, the glider army headed toward its objective as the boats went in. From the air, ships could be seen stretching for miles in the choppy water along the coast. Back and forth across the channel, the air traffic continued without halt.
Rocket ships added their weight to the destruction of the beach defenses. The landing craft made their drive toward shore through lanes cleared during the night by minesweepers. Until the last possible moment, our planes hit at the enemy on the shoreline. Landing craft of all descriptions negotiated the last dangerous stretch of water. The air forces did not neglect targets inland. Everything that could hinder our advance was subject to attack from the sky. The moment when Allied soldiers were going to put foot on French soil was close at hand. To make the foot soldiers job easier, our planes struck at roads and transport leading up toward the threatened coast. From the ships, field artillery pieces joined battle while waiting to disembark. The men in the landing craft tensed for the impact of the moment when they hit the beach. Inland, our fighters made sure that the Luftwaffe stayed on the ground.
few hundred feet ahead lay France. Sea-going tanks were brought up quickly to meet German armor. More men stepped onto the continent, into the fire of enemy guns that had survived the preliminary bombardment. Two of the architects of the operation kept a watchful eye on proceedings. And a well-known soldier boarded a naval vessel early in the affair. The Luftwaffe was not entirely absent. Heavy supplies were landed quickly on the beaches. Men kept pouring in. The unloading went on swiftly.
The air forces, flying low, continued to find targets on the roads and railway lines. On fields inland, the gliders had landed and discharged their cargo. More and more men were put ashore, more material. German fire brought down Allied soldiers, but others kept on. Craft sank in the rough sea and many rescues were effected. Fires dotted the battlefield, but the work of securing the beachhead went on. In from the coast, the infantry pushed ahead, forcing the enemy back. Tanks rolled up to support the advance. Civilians came out from their shelters to greet the liberating army. Savage street fighting took place at many points. This was part of the West Wall, and these were some of its defenders.
troops worked their way in, collecting prisoners on the roadside. The war was over for these Germans, and things obviously had begun well for this soldier. German troops seemed to come in all qualities. They were herded back to the beach to await transport to Britain. Our own wounded were collected early and treated and prepared for transfer to hospitals in Britain. Back across the channel, survivors picked from wrecked craft in the sea were checked and cared for. The first dead to return were a symbol of the price we had paid to enter Europe. German officers seemed downcast and sullen. Prisoners were sent to their new homes to wait for the end of the war. On the French side of the channel, the work of consolidating the beach went on. And reinforcements arrived in a constant stream. Engineers worked on clearing the beaches.
Heavy supplies came off the ships in trucks. And tanks in ever-increasing numbers came ashore and started work. Foot soldiers moved in from the beaches after the enemy. Toward Berlin.